Today, we're putting all the gear into the racks. These are APC Net Shelter, a 3150 and a 3350, as we're building out our AI home data center. So this is a lot of lifting, let's get started. Make sure to set your torque brake to one or whatever the lowest is on your screw gun. And the rails I'm using are APC generic rails. Link to that video where I covered those in the description below. These are very adjustable racks. So if you notice, I needed to push this one just a little bit further forward to square up with the other one. It is not by any means a silent UPS, the Eaton 9PX11K. They do have newer versions and it is a good time also as you're putting these things in to clean them up just a little bit. PDU that is direct attached to it and it'll break it out for three other PDUs that are 30 amps each. So yeah, definitely hopefully going to be drawing in less dirt. These rails for the MSL 8096 are absolutely tremendous in size. Definitely a heavy, heavy machine. So you can kind of get it if you're one person, if you do it like that. But I, I really think if you can definitely have a second set of hands, this entire process probably was about five hours to put this all together. Putting in the MD3060E, the Dell 60 bay jbod and i've done several videos on these particular jbods you can find links to those in the description below so certainly you can see me here having to jam my hand in there it's a pretty sharp sheet metal in there also so you can definitely cut yourself up of course the big thing sas 2 60 drives really 24 drives is where you're going to max theoretical cap out as far as the performance of sas 2 if you are running a JBOD, the number of discs may not be able to be fully utilized. So more of these very affordable rails, and they can hold quite a bit of load. DS4246s, great JBOD 24 drives. SAS 2 with an IOM 6, SAS 1 if you had a IOM 3. And make sure you have everything unloaded, of course, before you load it up. It'll greatly help you not hurt yourself if you have unloaded fully. And there's a lot of metal and the weight of these goes down substantially when you take out the IOMs and even the carrier trays, you could take those out also. It's a good time to clean all of the insides of all of these devices. They're all kind of older. And up at the top here, we've got our 2.5 inch drive SAS JBOD. Definitely ran into a couple of problems, but I am actually thinking about the 3.84 SAS 12 SSDs that are quite available out there for really good prices now, about 100 to 150. And yeah, I'm pretty excited if I can get a pile of those. I think the performance on them is somewhere around 1200 read and 750 write, the ones I'm looking at right now. So getting the R930 populated, I mean, just depopulating it saves like 25 pounds. So definitely depopulate it. That's like 25 extra pounds right there. And rails. Yeah, make sure your rails are functioning good before you get anything in there. If there is ook or something, make sure you clean it up. When you're doing your nuts and stuff, make sure you use a consistent size like an M6 and you should definitely separate out if you've got just piles of these things laying around before you get to the part where you're actually installing. Now that one that I just put in there is actually an R720 XD and if you look to the left you'll see that I've got another that is a broken chassis but a functional R730 XD so I need to do a chassis transplant from the R730 XD that has the broken chassis into the R720 XD chassis. They are the exact same size and so it should work out and you can definitely follow along with this channel and I'm sure that I'll be talking or reporting back if that works and how much of a problem it might have been. Hopefully it's not that big of a problem. So now we're up to the networking component. So at the end here, you're going to actually see the finished product and it's quite a bit different than what I'm putting in here. And I think this is a good way to do things also because you think about things when you're putting together and assembling, don't be afraid to make changes. And yeah, so you won't actually see the 48 port in there when we get to the finished product here. There were several changes, like I mentioned, that got made to the entire setup. This is some real riggery that I got going on here. These are some insanely old rails, but I'm gonna use these insanely old rails to hold the SN2700 100 gigabit switch. And some people were asking about cable termination and front facing, rear facing. I've done it rear facing, I've done it front facing. I, I do it for the utility of it. And right now, all of the cables that I've got that are 100 gigabit and 40 gigabit DACs are appropriately sized for front facing and not rear facing. So it just makes extra cable management 
that I'll have to do if I go and back face these. So I'm not too concerned about that, but that doesn't mean it'll stay this way. I might, for different reasons, and those being audio reasons, remove the networking components from the rack completely and put them in their own separate area, which I could hopefully do a good job of dedicated noise isolation around. We'll just have to see though. But yeah, I think it looks great and I'm very happy with it. Now I've got just absolutely tons of additional gear. So like I mentioned in the next video, we'll be cabling everything up. And then in the following video after that, we'll be installing the software. That'll probably be a much longer video and just talking about some initial configuration. So of course, home lab data center, this is a pretty big thing to have, but also it is a lab. So don't be surprised when you change things up in your own lab. And this is one of the reasons to make sure you have dedicated areas for things that would be like any production work that you're doing. Oh, here's the view from the back. Oh man, these are great racks. And look at all the extra space that I've got back there compared to how tight and crammed those horrible, horrible Dell racks were. Yeah, much better working space, much, much better working space. And that is a really cool IKVM that the Abosent 8032 will be covering. It looks like everything else mounted up just really well. And so the raceway that I have that goes to the top and ingresses and egresses from the house over there, man, that's a lot of stuff I got to remove out of here and either scrap it or sell it. I don't know what I'm going to do. My gosh, I've got a lot of stuff little bit of tape there to seal that up on the tape library. I need to get one more piece of metal blanking. And in the back here, we'll go our power supplies, our air dams, and of course, our IOMs for the DS4246s. So yeah, I am excited to get to the part where we turn this all on, and I hope you are also. So we've got our rack put together. I did make some changes already, and I probably am gonna make even more changes. To a couple of things and if you have a rack you should be flexible because you're probably going to make some changes on the fly that you should make if you see something that is glaringly obvious decided i'm going to go ahead and center this this destroys the utility of another rack however so i've got to become creative again and figure out a good placement for another rack a lot of people are asking a good question where gpu so i think you know, I don't want to give everything away, but you definitely should hit like and subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified when that kind of stuff comes out. So I've got to invent a new spot here for something behind there, which is going to take a little bit more time because there was going to be space before I centered this. Now that I've centered it, there's not space. And everybody's given me a lot of great ideas. Somebody said put some panels there with some information displays. Awesome idea, way too much effort and work, unfortunately, because rigging that up, non-trivial. But definitely do keep these great ideas coming. I look forward to reading your comments below in this, the part three, where we put all of the gear in here. Next up, we're gonna be cabling and populating everything. The video after that, we're gonna be actually turning it all on. Very excited for that one. And then at a video that is going to come after that shortly, hopefully by that time I've got a really good solution, is going to be our GPU racking. And this is gonna be a very non-traditional one, so you definitely, definitely wanna follow along with this. So I hope you've enjoyed this and definitely hit like, subscribe, ring the bell. Big shout out to our members and everybody who buys me a coffee and our Patreons. And I want you to take a chance and check out these videos here if you're looking for more information on getting up and running and starting your home AI data center. And also, if you're just interested in a giant playlist of home data center related videos, almost all of this stuff has been covered in exquisite detail many times in the past. So definitely check out this video playlist here.